bats to spin and it is a commission project uh, to make for one person and they would like a cohesive yarn with all the three bats. So this is one of the ways I would do it. Um, they do want a kind of an art yarn, a bulky yarn and these are three bats that I've made myself. So, and they are quite different, but you know, they all have shades of blue, which is what uh, they liked. So, now to make it all cohesive. One has a lot of black, dark colors in it with a lot of colorful sari silk. Uh, this has different shades of teal and blue. And this has some blue, red with some cotton nets in it. Now I could just spin it one after the other, but that would kind of make three different yarns. And in order to make them cohesive, I'm actually going to combine them. And there are several ways one can do that. So first let me open these up. Uh, all these bats are made by me, so I kind of know what's in them. But you know, you could have the this approach with, you know, bats that uh, you get from others as well you know we pick up bats and fiber because of the colors that we like so i'm just going to open this up and there is my bat now this is a gradient which goes from blue to red now i could strip this up into tiny bits and just spin them one after the other strip that and then do the same thing but it really doesn't make for a cohesive yarn. It will make three different yarns, like I said. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is actually open these up on top of each other. Now it does feel like the colors might not go so well together, but I do plan on core spinning this. So there is going to be like these different layers, which will all get spun up together when I core spin. So this is the way I would do them. And of course there are a million ways to do it. You could just spin a regular yarn. Now this is mostly grays and blacks. But I think yeah, that would be good. There we go. Okay. Now I can take this and I'm going to strip all three pieces together and the reason why I sandwich it and do it because the process of stripping them together kind of combines them together as well so that will be one of my strips like if I strip them separately and then held them together they will, less chances you know they will be together even this way they are not really together because they haven't been carded together but if you just layer them on top of each other and then strip them, it'll be interesting, you know, how to, you know, I have cotton nips in all of them rather than just one of the bats. that does have some red in it that kind of feels a little bit of an oddball but I think it'll be fine so I have all these different bats and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to attenuate these by just slightly you know pulling them all together this will kind of help the while spinning you know they will not be so separate even if they do separate it's fine it will kind of make a variegated yarn it will have bits of all the three bats throughout the yarn there's not going to be you know big separations and because this is a bat mixed fibers some things are going to have you know more um shorter staple lengths, some have longer staple lengths, different textures. 
and this is what we have here. So that is one of our bad links that will core spin and similarly I'm going to uh, attenuate all of them. Uh, now the gold and the, the ones with the red, because they are slightly different from all the rest, I might split them into more pieces and uh, so this one I'm going to hold it together and maybe split it one more time and then when I'm spinning all of this together. I just interspace the red ones somewhere in between throughout the yarn so that it doesn't feel like all the red just came in one side of the yarn. So there. So that can be one battling that will be interplaced in between somewhere. And usually I don't like to attenuate till I'm ready to spin. So I'm just going to make these battlings and it's only when I'm ready to spin is when I'm going to attenuate it like I did with that one. Now I'm attenuating by hand because I'm kind of making, you know, a coarse spun yarn. I don't want a very traditional smooth yarn out of this, but if you did want a traditional yarn, the one thing you can do is you can pass the bats through a div. Uh, if I wanted to spin it like kind of fine, not necessarily fine, but you know, a textured uh, yarn, not necessarily coarse one, but just spinning it as a single and then maybe plying it uh, either on itself or plying it on something else. So this is one of my divs. I use the fiber threader to remove some fiber out and this is the way I diz my fiber uh, when it's not on a drum carder or not on a bend blending board. You know, you get a bat and then you kind of have to do it yourself. So I just put my hand on the rest of the bat and I pull the fiber and move my diz along. I am using the largest hole in my diz to pull all the fiber across and what this does is it actually combines them really well they don't split while spinning and just makes a more consistent spin if that's what you're looking for if you want it more textured I would leave it you know just attenuate it slightly by hand texture sometimes can get a little tough but it'll keep moving along And this also helps to trap those cotton nets in there. So you see, so far we haven't seen any of them fall up. And surprisingly, cotton nets are stick with wool a lot better than woolen nets. Wool nets just fall off every time. Cotton kind of sticks through. So see if every time you feel one of the bats falling apart this is what will happen likely if I was just spinning as is but because I'm attenuating it like this and passing it through the this I can move it along and make sure that all my fibers have too much of cotton nets sticking there they're all getting stuck back here so let's just disperse them in there It's almost like they're getting filtered out, but that's okay. You will get them all. 
So see the black is getting left behind. I'm just going to move it back here. Let's bring it together. I have a slight break there, which is fine. And that's mostly because of those cotton nets. So sometimes you just don't know what you're going to get in your textured bag. Some things will pass easily through your dills, some won't. But you can make it work as long as you have a bigger hole in your dills and it will work out. Now see, I see that the blue fiber is getting left behind. I'm just dizzing off the black. So I'm going to just bring that close. So I capture some of that. And we'll put it through. So I can use some more cotton nets. There are some cotton nets which are just really big. So that's what's causing the hole to clog up. There we go. See, now I'm going to shift over to the blue a little bit so that I'm not just dizzing off the black. Usually I don't like to put cotton nets uh, for this process. I would, you know, usually make a textured art yarn out of it and that'll be good. There we go. A little bit more here. I can take these two. So see, this is what, when I'm spinning these, these will just split apart. But if I just go ahead and dis it through. Just capture some of the fiber there, pull it across, and just pull it through. So this is like pre-drafting the fiber, joining it together, and make it, it you know into more cohesive fiber blend which you can, you know, now this will stay together. It will be much easier to spin and I won't be fighting the three different bats. So we have some small bits here, which is fine, but I could get majority of the roving in one piece. This is my prep work done. So these are going to be a lot more easier to spin and I can get a more consistent yarn throughout if I just use this rather than, you know, spinning three different bats separately. So have fun with that. <laughs>